Power. The insulation of the internal electrical coils will melt. This will cause a shorty circuit and the motor will destroy itself. The fins on the side of the enclosure help to increase the surface area and that lets us remove more unwanted heat. The shaft is supported by some bearings, which sit inside the front as well as the rear shafts. The bearings help the shaft rotate smoothly and also hold it in position. Inside the housing, we find the stator. The stator is stationary and does not rotate. This consists of a number of copper wires which are wrapped into coils between the slots positioned around the body of the uh, induction motor <coughs> okay tapi dia bukanlah uh, bukan dia yang pusing and we just uh, winding ataupun wrapping the stator with a winding yang uh, apa dekat parameter dalam dia saja okay so benda yang beli tadi kita nak buy uh, winding ni winding ni akan mingle around inside Sampai atas ni supaya ada magnetic field Dal Supaya it can create a, magnetic, a temporary magnetic field Once you bagi supply dekat dia okay. Once you bagi supply dekat induction machine Baru ada magnetic field dalam ni okay. And ingat tak dia ada phase A, phase B, phase C And tiga phase ni akan menghasilkan berapa pole pula Not south, not south, not south Okay Depends how many slot Ataupun how many uh, uh, Number of slot ni Okay, dia akan hasilkan pole The more pole, the more turn The more strength of the magnetic field Okay The copper wires are coated with a special enamel which electrically insulates the wires from each other. This means that electricity has to flow through the entire coil. Otherwise, it would take the shortest path possible. And you'll see why that's important a little later in this video. Now, this is a three-phase induction motor. So, we have three separated sets of coils in the stator. The ends of each set will connect with the terminals within the electrical terminal box. We will also see how these are connected a little later in this video. When connected to the electrical supply, the stator generates a rotating electromagnetic field. Connected to the shaft is the rotor. In this case, it's a squirrel cage type rotor. It's called a squirrel cage because it has two end rings which are connected by some bars, and these will all rotate together. This design is similar to a small cage or an exercise wheel used by a pet hamster or even a squirrel. The squirrel cage is fitted with a number of laminated steel sheets. These sheets will help concentrate the magnetic field into the bars. Okay. Another, another important uh, factor that we have in the design or construct induction machine is uh, called laminated steel sheets. Ataupun dia sebenarnya kind of piece lah Sebab dia kan dalam bulat, dalam bentuk bulat And it been slotted pula One by one actually Inside the stator Okay, sebelum you uh, yang uh, Inside, sorry, inside the roto Okay, so uh, There's a reason kenapa dia Kenapa dia tak buat one solid Cylinder je? Anybody? Tengok ayah ni, actually this, uh, this ni, the laminated steel sheet ni Dia slot in, nampak ni ada 1, 2, 3, ada banyak Slice, 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 slice of this uh, steel sheet Okay, dia slot in and then baru dia pasang Dia macam, I don't know lah, lekat ke screw ke apa ke Okay, and then baru dia bagi ada ada shaft kat sini dan dia jadi satu rotor Okay, so instead of doing like this, kenapa dia tak buat solid cylinder je? Uh, uh, conductor and then electric current 
current bila ada magnetic field dia akan create kita panggil eddy losses losses yang involve dengan surface of the this thing okey so bila surface makin sikit losses makin tinggi so you kena create banyak surface so that you akan kurangkan losses tu konsep dia so you, instead of a solid piece of metal as this improves the efficiency by reducing the size of the eddy currents in the rotor when the rotor is placed inside the stator and the stator is connected to an electrical power supply the rotor will begin to rotate so how does this work when electricity passes through a wire an electromagnetic field is generated around the wire we can see this by placing some compasses around the wire the compasses will rotate to align with this magnetic field if the direction of current is reversed the magnetic field also reverses and so the compasses will change direction the magnetic field of the When electricity passes through a wire, an electromagnetic field is generated around the wire. We can see this by placing some compasses around the wire. The compasses will rotate to align with this magnetic field. If the direction of current is reversed, the magnetic field also reverses. Pembuktian yang bila you arah current ke atas, arah current tu clockwise kan? Eh? Counter clockwise. Counter clockwise. Okay. Kalau tengok, mana? Oh Kenapa tak nak full screen? <coughs> Head to the delta version. Be exposed to 230 volts between the phase and the neutral point. So, so, the electromagnetic field will also therefore change. We can see this by placing some compasses around the wire. The compasses will rotate to align with this magnetic field. Okay, uh, dia ada dua cara je. How to verify. Satu, you letak kompas kiri ni. Eh, kalau tengok, uh, not ini. Notes dia ke arah sana. Notes dia ke arah sana. Notes dia ke arah sini. Notes dia ke arah sini. Dan dia ke arah sana. So, dia... Satu cara lagi adalah dengan menabur by sprinkle serbuk besi Tapi kita tak nampak arah lah Serbuk besi so, tak ada nak panah Cuma kita nampak lah ada, ada dia akan jadi macam Medan magnet And so the compasses will change direction. The magnetic field of the wire is pulling and pushing the compass dials. Just like if we could also rotate the magnet by changing the intensity of the magnetic field around it. If we place a wire in a magnetic field and pass a current through it, the magnetic field of the wire will interact with the permanent magnet's magnetic field and the wire will therefore experience a force. This force will move the wire either upwards or downwards, depending on the direction of current and the polarity of the magnetic fields. If we wrap the wire into a coil, the electromagnetic field becomes stronger. The coil will produce a north and south pole, just like a permanent magnet. 
recall these coils of wire and inductor. When we pass an alternating current through the wire, the electrons will be constantly changing direction between flowing forwards and backwards. So the magnetic field will also expand and collapse and the polarity reverses each time. When we place another separated coil in close proximity and complete the circuit, the electromagnetic field will induce a current in the second coil. We can connect two coils together and place them opposite each It will induce a current in the loop. As we know, circuit, the electromagnetic field will induce a current. Okay, this is also the main concept of wireless power transfer. Uh, in trend, okay. in trend sekarang, okay, wireless power transfer. Maksudnya kita letak macam you charge phone, letak je kan? So it's a wireless power transfer ada coil je sebenarnya dalam tu. Okay, cuma dia masih uh, inefficient because dia panas. Kan? Sebab tu dia tak panas. Sebab tu dia tak perlu panas. Kan? Dia nak transfer power je. We can connect two coils together and place them opposite each other to create a larger magnetic field. If we place a closed loop of wire inside this large magnetic field, we will induce a current in the loop. As we know, when we pass a current through a wire, it generates a magnetic field. And we also know the magnetic fields will push or pull each other when they interact. So this loop of wire will also generate a magnetic field and this will interact with the larger magnetic field. Each side of the coil will experience opposing forces, which causes it to rotate. This loop is therefore our rotor, and the coils are therefore our stator. The rotor will only rotate until it aligns with the stator coils. At this point, it will likely get stuck as the induced current reverses with the coil. To overcome this, we need to introduce another set of coils in the stator. We must connect these to another phase. The electrons flow in this phase at a slightly different time. So, the electromagnetic field will also therefore change in strength as well as polarity at a slightly different time. This will force the rotor to rotate. Inside the induction motor, we have three separated coils which are used to produce a rotational electromagnetic field. When we pass an alternating current through each coil, the coils will produce an electromagnetic field which changes in intensity as well as polarity as the electrons change direction. But if we were to connect each coil to a different phase, then the electrons in each coil will change direction at a different time. Field varies in strength and polarity between the coils, which combine to produce the effect of a rotating magnetic field. We saw earlier in this video that current can be induced into a second coil when in close proximity. The bars of the squirrel cage are shorted at each end, which therefore creates multiple loops or coils. Each bar therefore induces a current and creates a magnetic field. The magnetic field of the rotor bars interacts with the magnetic field of the stator. The rotor bar's magnetic field is attracted to the magnetic field of the stator. As the magnetic field is rotating, the rotor will therefore also rotate in the same direction as the magnetic field to try and align with it. 
but it will never be able to fully catch up. The bars of the rotor are often skewed. This helps distribute the magnetic field across multiple bars and stops the motor being able to align and jam. The stator contains all of the coils or windings used to create the rotating electromagnetic field when electricity is passed through the wires. To power the coils, we find an electrical terminal box on the top or sometimes on the side. Inside this box, we have six electrical terminals. Each terminal has a corresponding letter and number. We have U1, D1 and W1, then W2, U2 and V2. We have our phase one coil. This uh, U1, V1, W1, U2, W2, V2. Also, we will use uh, the same configuration akan digunakan untuk your lab nanti. Okay. Uh, there's a reason why they buat macam tu. Sebab dari sini, this is how you connect star or delta. Okay. Mana kuat? Star kuat ke delta kuat? Siapa kata delta kuat? I mean, delta will be uh, make the magnetic field stronger and talk lagi kuat. Star or delta? Siapa kata delta? Angkatlah tangan. Star lah. Kenapa angkat tangan tengok? Masih berfungsi lah tangan tu. Cuma angkat tangan tengok. Star, seorang dua je. Lagi? Star. Confirm star eh. Okay, as an engineer Bila you cakap, you kena Confident You cakap tu betul ke salah Kan? Mana boleh tak tahu Mungkin tak tahu juga dah Tak boleh tak tahu This is star Okay, and this is Delta Stand by your calculator Okay, basically dalam ni dia ada Kalau untuk machine lah, dia ada Sambung star And yang ni adalah Yang ni sambung delta Okay So So Yang ni pun 415 Line to line eh? Okay Yang nak tahu Yang nak dapat dekat satu ini ni This will be B Phase dia Turn And this one will be dia punya B Phase Sebab apa? Point dia sama Betul? Betul Betul tak? Okay And then Untuk case yang ni Satu ni dapat berapa? Satu fasa ni dapat berapa? Berapa dia? Formula dia. V line adalah setiga ke? Bahagi setiga ke kali setiga? V face ataupun V face over set 3. Betul? Macam tu? Ha, so berapa? Kira tu. Kita nak V face dia akan jadi V line setiga. So 415 set 3. Betul ke? 
terminals, then the phase 2 coils which are connected to the two V terminals, and lastly the phase 3 coil which is connected to the two W terminals. Notice that the electrical terminals are arranged in a different configuration from one side to the other. We will see why that is in just a moment. We now bring in our three phase power supply and connect these to the For the motor to run, we need to complete the circuit, and there are two ways to do this. The first way is the delta configuration. For this, we connect across the terminals U1 to W2, V1 to U2, and W1 to V2. This will give us our delta configuration. Now, when we provide AC current through the phases, we see that the electricity flows from one phase to another as the direction of AC power reverses in each phase at a different time. That is why we have the terminals in di different arrangements in the terminal box. The other way we can connect the terminal. Okay. Uh, dekat, uh, dekat your induction motor, uh, practically, Memang dia dia macam ni, dia tulis sebelah-sebelah je Dia tulis sebelah-sebelah And you hanya ada, dia, dia ada isi dia pakai uh, High current punya kabel Untuk, untuk sambung atas bawah ni Ataupun dia bagi clip You screw je atas dengan bawah Okay, clip, yang ni adalah uh, copper clip lah Okay, so isi dia you pasang straight Ataupun pasang serum untuk dapatkan star So yang ni untuk delta, tengok eh U1 and W2 dia kawan U1 Sambung ke W2 U2 and V1 Dia kawan U2 and V1 W2 and uh, W1 V2 and W1 So bila you connect dalam uh, Manner yang bentuk yang macam ni Baru you nampak delta lah Kalau macam ni tak nampak lah Nampak macam parallel line dia Okay Sebab yang dalam ni fake Winding tu is already in Dah ada dia punya, yelah construction ni dah you already construct the motor, is already there Tapi kita boleh tukar di hujung ataupun di pemula of the supply To use the star or Y configuration In this method, we connect between W2, U2 and B2 on O Each terminal has a corresponding letter and one coil terminals, and lastly tied to the other. The run you when we put each phase and a The amount of current flowing in the star and delta configuration is very different. And we're going to see some calculations for these towards the end of this video. But first, I want to tell you about the Great Courses Plus. 
all of our viewers can get a free trial right now by visiting thegreatcoursesplus.com forward slash engineering mindset. The Great Courses put everything in front of As a fan, let's have a look at the difference between the star and delta configurations. Let's say we have the motor connected in delta with a supply voltage of 400 volts. That means when we use a multimeter to measure the voltage between any two phases, we will get a reading of 400 volts. We call this our line-to-line -line voltage. Now, if we measure across the two ends of a coil, we again see the line-to-line -line voltage of 400 volts. Let's say each coil has a resistance, or impedance, as this is alternating current, of 20 ohms. That means we will get a current reading on the coil of 20 amps. We can calculate that from 400 volts divided by 20 ohms, which is 20 amps. But the current in the line will be different. It will be 34.6 amps. We get that from 20 amps multiplied by the square root of 3, which is 34.6 amps. That's because each phase is connected to two coils. Now, if we look at the star or Y configuration, we again have a line-to-line -line voltage of 400 volts. We see that if we measure between any two phases. But with the star configuration, all our coils are connected together and meet at the star point or neutral point. It's from this point that we can run a neutral wire if needed. So this time, when we measure the voltage across the ends of any coil, we get a lower voltage of 230 volts. That's because the phase isn't directly connected to two coils, like in the delta configuration. One end of the coil is connected to a phase, but the other is connected to a shared point. So the voltage is therefore shared. The voltage is less, as one phase is always in reverse. We can calculate this by 400 volts divided by the square root of three which is 230 volts. As the voltage is less, the current will be two. If this coil also has an impedance of 20 ohms, then 230 volts divided by 20 amps equals 11.5 amps. The line current will also therefore be the same at 11.5 amps. So we can see from the delta configuration, the coil is exposed to the full 400 volts between two phases but the star configuration is only exposed to 230 volts between the phase and the neutral point. So the star uses... Kenapa saya tanya, star data mana kuat? Uh, because it relates uh, to the we are operating an eh, induction motor. Okay? There's a lot of winding. Ada mm. banyak turn. Okay? Mm. Winding ni apa komponen dia? Mm. Huh? Copper. Dia tadi kita cakap pasal wireless power transfer, kita cakap pasal dia uh, intern, dia adalah inductance, uh, storage component, passive kan, passive component. Maksudnya, you tak start lagi, you you tak start lagi motor, dah ada energy dah dalam ni. Datang daripada mana? Dari previous operation of the motor. Pernah dengar in rush current? Nanti boleh tengok masa lab ni You start the motor Current dia akan naik spike tinggi Baru dapat Yang ni yang berapa sepuluh berapa ampere dia cakap tu 11.5 atau 20 ampere And you know how big is this? Berapa kali ganda? Boleh jadi 40 Depends how many turns Of the Induction motor Okay It's uh, it's a very dangerous sebenarnya Tapi kalau you tahu You ada ilmu You tahu macam mana nak start dia Appropriately Benda ni tak salah Benda ni uh, Sorry Benda ni tak bahaya Okay Sebab kita ada kaedah Which is uh, Start motor with star connection Switch and run motor with star connection Maksudnya Masa start tu Dia ada satu configuration And lepas dah start for a while Baru dia tukar kepada Configuration lain Okay, waktu start tu dia delta 
dah start dah dia, dia you bagi dia data connection dulu and then dah after a while baru dia switch kepada star Okay, it will do by benda ni bukan manual lah bukan you tukar you screw I screw tak dia dia autonomous Okay Okay, that's it for this video, but to continue learning about electrical engineering. Nama tu nak cari nama eh Kalau saya pun duduk fikir macam mana lah Nak cari nama, nak pergi mudah sikit
Itu in term of physics In term of electrical Takkan tak pernah tahu Power adalah Tok kali speed So tok adalah power over Speed Apa power? Power kuasa yang you bagi dekat dia Power up And motor speed uh, And arc And it must be in uh, Radian per second So kalau you bagi You dapat NR Kali dengan Pi 2 pi per 60 Okay Itu dari segi Electrical dia Ada lagi Tak ada Masa pun dah habis Okay Thank you very much for your time Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Nanti saya release quiz dalam classroom Tolong jawab nak eh? Assalamualaikum